And I was raised by this funny mom um, that loved to make box cake, and I was raised by grandmothers, and they made frosting one way. And honestly, that is the way that I, we make frosting today. Um, we don't make boiled frosting. We don't make anything other than this frosting. And it's really simple, um, and it's really easy to um, alter the flavors of it. It's butter, unsalted European-style butter. It's confectioner sugar. We paddle those two suckers together until the butter has broken down. Um, we're going to make this frosting into coffee frosting. Um, when we are creating recipes and we're trying to figure out what, what we want, what flavor we want in what vehicle, so in this case, coffee into a frosting, we have so many decisions we have to think about. One, what, kind of, what type of frosting do we want to make? Inevitably, it comes back to this very simple style of, of frosting. Um, and how are we going to get the flavor in? So when you think about coffee, it's like, okay, we could do this. I could skin this cat so many different ways. I can just add coffee. Um, but coffee is largely water-based, so it's going to alter my volume. It's going to plummet my volume fracture. Plummet the volume fraction. It's not good. Um, it's going to separate. It's not going to emulsify. This is not good. No one wants an unemulsified frosting. Will you hand me one more spatula? Yeah, of course. Um, I can add espresso. Espresso works. Espresso is a little bit bitter, and I don't know. I don't want it to taste like espresso. I want it to taste like coffee. Um, I could, what else could I do? I could like melt the butter and try and brew coffee through it or try and like do a pour over with coffee. I mean, I start going in all these places of like, okay, how can I do it? Um, we tested so many different recipes for coffee frosting and we ended up taking whole milk, instant coffee and some kosher salt. Um, and the instant coffee really allows you to get a depth of flavor in there without um, having to add too much milk. So you can really, really control the depth of flavor against the depth, uh, against the amount of milk that you're adding in. Now, the hardest part about creating something is it's really easy to dream up an idea, but it's really hard to make it into, make it into a reality. And, um, I'm gonna let you finish while I talk. Okay, great. Um, and the hardest part about something like this coffee frosting is, I know I need to add coffee in some, in some degree. The um, instant coffee really needs the milk to dissolve itself, right? Um, we don't just like, I mean, maybe some of you eat instant coffee granules, but I don't, I want it to be smooth, and I want it to have the flavor of coffee, so, um, I can't just paddle instant coffee into my butter. I need enough liquid to hydrate that instant coffee into a coffee flavor. But I also know that I only have a certain allowance for the amount of liquid that I can add into this frosting before it breaks and it separates. Um, and this coffee frosting like literally comes right up to the line in terms of um, keeping that emulsification intact and separating, oops, separating it out. Um, and that is the hardest part of the job, where it's like knowing when to say when. I wish that more of us took um, these classes to be able to sort of do, to be able to really calculate the math and understand. We understand why it's happening. We understand how it's happening. But sometimes we don't understand what the, like, what the very, 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 um, what the tipping point is and what amount we can add before it tips over and so on. Um, and that's the coolest part of the job too is sort of getting to learn about the scientific process through something as simple as like, all right, I want to make a coffee frosting, but it needs to be able to be smooth enough to spread 